Hi, I'm Phyllis. My website is southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make another stuffed pumpkin, and this time we're going to stuff it with pork. And this uh, recipe is really inspired by Chef John. I know some of y'all know who he is. And uh, so we're going to do it uh, in a similar way. And I did watch his video. I've watched another one of his videos maybe six months ago where he made some kind of meat pie. And uh, I'm going to try that at some point too. But I was most impressed with the way he stuffed the pumpkin. So we're going to do something similar. But first I wanted to clean this out. And uh, if y'all, any of y'all see the comment where the person recommended using the top of a lid, it's got the little flipper thing on it, to clean out a pumpkin. Uh, I could not find that comment, but I know it was someone, and I want to thank you very much for that. So I've already cut the top off. Now this is a very small pie pumpkin, very, very small. So, just see if we can get that top out. We'll go ahead and cut that off like that and trying to uh, do this so that it's not so hard. So first I'm going to stick this down in there. I went ahead and bent it sort of in half to be able to get it down in there. Of course you want to be careful and not cut yourself. So I'm going to see how that does. So far so good. It really just cuts that right out. Hey, y'all cut. I'm sorry, y'all. There's somebody walking down the street, walking their dog. And so my dogs have to bark at them. All right, let's see. I need to get a big spoon to be able to reach down all the way in there. Because I didn't quite cut my hole big enough to get my hand down in there. This is a very small little pie pumpkin. that. It definitely works with that lid. It works also on the uh, acorn squash too. So let's try this again at the top there. So it definitely gets it out at the top. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's see how much we've gotten out of this now. That's a lot in there. except I couldn't get right at the bottom because I didn't cut my hole big enough. All right, did a pretty good job. I got to work on it a little bit more in there. All right, y'all, we'll be back and I'm going to get my skillet out, get my pork over here so y'all can see it and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we got our pumpkin all cleaned out and we're going to start on the pork now. And I wanted to show you the roast. I got a sirloin pork roast is what it is, but it's a, a sirloin cut. The weight is 2.74 pounds. Wait a minute, no, that's not right. That's the price. It's 1.75 pounds. So that would certainly be enough for four servings for $4.80. Can y'all see that? There you go. So um, I did wash this pork and dried it off and cut it up into kind of big chunks, really, just, just like Chef John did. So we're going to season this now, and I'm going to use some salt. I've got my skillet heating up to medium high. I'm going to put plenty of salt on it. And we're going to use some onion powder. And we're going to use some garlic powder. And 
I'm going to use just a couple of dashes of allspice, like that, and I'm going to use a little bit of cinnamon, like that. And now we're going to coat this. First of all, we're going to mix it all up. I'm going to try to keep one hand clean if I can. And I think we can cook this or brown it all at one time. So I'm just going to mush it all up and get those spices on everything. Like that. Put all that down in my bowl. Now he let his uh, spices marinate on this pork or kind of cover the pork. Let it sit overnight in the refrigerator. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and and cook this. Alright, so we need enough flour now to coat this. And again, my skillet's all heating up. And I'm using just regular all-purpose flour, or actually I think this is bread flour, which I actually prefer for browning stuff. Let's set that down over here. Just cut that pork, those pork chunks. And by the way, the sirloin uh, roast is a very lean uh, pork roast. We need a little more flour. Get it all coated. And we're going to brown it at least on two sides of these clumps of pork, or chunks, shall we say. All right, and again, we got our heat on sort of almost to medium high. So we're going to go ahead and brown this. Yeah, so this is a pound and three-fourths of sirloin pork roast. I think I'm going to have room for all of it. Heat it just a little bit more. Already smells good. Mm. All right, so we're going to get this brown on at least two sides of these little chunks of pork, and uh, we'll be back then. All right, we are back, and our pork has got some nice color on it. And guess what I did? I put the pumpkin in the microwave, and I uh, heated it up. Can y'all see it smoking there? Not smoking, but the steam coming out of it. Because I want to hurry this along, so I'm thinking maybe this will cook in an hour and a half rather than three or four hours. And I do have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put this pork in inside the pumpkin. And if I can't get it all in, then I'm going to cook it alongside the pumpkin. Definitely looks like I'm not going to be able to get it all in because this is a very small pumpkin. Yeah, so that pumpkin is really hot, which is great. Pick a small piece here, put that in, we move y'all closer, right there. Yeah, so I thought heating up the pumpkin in the microwave was very hot, would work. pieces in. Yeah. Oh, pumpkin's hot. All right, so I've got about five or six pieces left. And so I'm still going to put those around the bottom there to cook. So I don't have any apple cider. I don't particularly like apple cider. Anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. I've got one cup of apple juice, and I'm going to put about a tablespoon of vinegar in there. 
like that. Got a tablespoon. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of brown sugar. Just kind of stir that up. Actually, why don't we just heat this up in the microwave too? We'll be right back. All right, we came right back, and again, we've got one cup of apple juice, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and one tablespoon of dark brown sugar. And that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna taste very much like apple cider. All right, so I'm gonna pour this right down in there and see if it'll hold the whole cup. Yeah, so it was almost, this is almost at the boiling point, so everything here is good and hot. So I'm thinking this ought to be able to cook in maybe an hour and a half, possibly even an hour. Let's see if I can get that to go down in there. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to use the other pork. I mean, I'm not going to let that go to waste. I'm just going to put that sort of around the pumpkin. Now, to go with this, we're going to make some more uh, cabbage steaks to, to go with this whole meal. And I'm going to put those in the oven uh, while this is still cooking for a little bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can get some more. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour that right over that little pork that wouldn't fit in there. Like that. Yeah, and the apple juice, and I use the Mott's apple juice and the um, apple cider vinegar. To me, it tastes just like apple cider, maybe even a little better. All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and put my top on it this time. I poked three little holes. Oh, y'all can see. I poked three little holes in there and three little holes there because when I was marking it with a pen, it just kind of came off. So we're going to just go ahead and lightly put that on there. And I'll probably be taking up this pork uh, earlier, what's on the outside here. I'm sure that'll get done first, but my pumpkin is very hot, so this should start cooking right away plus the apple juice and the uh, vinegar and the brown sugar were almost at a boil. So y'all will be back in, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half and show you what this all looks like. Hey y'all, well we're back and our, our pumpkin and pork is almost done. The little pork around the edge of the pan, of course, was completely done. So I took that up and I tasted of the piece. It's delicious. So. We're going to see if we can't make a little sauce. Now, I would say gravy, but it's going to be a little different than just gravy. We're going to use the uh, drippings in the pan now. I poured off a lot of the grease and just am using maybe a tablespoon or so of the uh, original grease that was in there. Actually, it was olive oil, so we're going to add a little flour to that. And this is just an experiment. We're going to see if this will work. Just stir that around a little bit and let it cook just a few, maybe a minute or so. Because we've got plenty of brown on the bottom of the pan. Let me move y'all closer. Like that. Let that flour cook just a little bit. Just going to call this a little sauce rather than gravy because we're going to actually strain it but we're going to get that taste all right now we're going to add a little bit of brown sugar that's a dark brown sugar that's about a tablespoon just stir that around a little bit and we're going to add about a cup and a half just plain apple juice. Got a cup and a half. And we're going to go ahead and 
put a little vinegar in it again. Again, about a tablespoon. That will work. And we're going to also add some salt to this. Just going to deglaze the pan with this apple juice and, and uh, apple cider vinegar. Like that. Oh, y'all couldn't see. So I added the cup and a half of apple juice with that little bit of about a tablespoon of vinegar in there. And the reason I'm doing this is because the pork was so good that a little piece I tasted of. So we'll let that come to a boil. Now I'm going to add just a dash of the allspice, two dashes, and a little bit of the cinnamon, two dashes. Yep. So we're going to let this thicken up a bit, and then we're actually going to just strain it. Let that come back to a boil and thicken up a little bit. You know, I, actually, I can go ahead and taste it a little bit of it right now. See what it tastes like. Let me move y'all back. I'll just taste of it. I swear to you that the, uh, I don't swear, but... You'll just have to trust me that you add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to apple juice and it tastes, and a little bit of sugar, and it tastes just like apple cider. I'm going to taste of this and see if it tastes good. It's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Mm -mm -mm. So that way, once I let this thicken up a little bit, It'll go great just putting it over the pork because I don't think I'm going to have the gravy that uh, Chef John had on his because I had so much meat in mine. All right. Let me show you what it looks like. It's really, really good. And I've already got the uh, cabbage steaks have been in the oven for a pretty good little while now, so they should be done soon. And the uh, pumpkin is pretty well done already. I'm going to take it out in just a few minutes. So we want to just thicken this up now. You could also use uh, cornstarch instead of flour and just put it, just dissolve it uh, in the uh, apple juice and make a gravy that's a little clearer probably. Yeah, so this is getting up all those little bits off the bottom of the skillet. All right, we're going to let this thicken up a little bit. I might have to add a little more apple juice to it, but it is delicious. Okay, we'll be back when this gets uh, ready, and I can go ahead and strain it. All right, we went ahead and strained this. Get me a cleaner spoon. All right, now see, it's not really thick at all. This is the way I like it. But if you want it a little thicker than that, just add a little more flour or a little more uh, cornstarch. But I can't wait to put this over. And by the way, I did add about another half of a tablespoon of brown sugar. Oh, I can't wait to have this. It is so good. All right, y'all. We're waiting for our uh, cabbage steaks to get done. And we're going to have some uh, corn pudding with us. I made some more yesterday. Uh, because we both just absolutely love it, which will go great with this meal. Let me show you the... There's the pork that I took up from around the uh, pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and take the pumpkin up now because I know it is totally done. And the pork inside, I checked it with the meat thermometer. It is totally done. So we'll be back in just a second. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here's what the pumpkin looks like. It's all done. There's that uh, gravy or sauce. There's the pork that was cooked around it. I might have already eaten a piece of that. It is delicious, absolutely delicious. So you can definitely um, substitute the apple juice and a little bit of the apple cider vinegar and some brown sugar. And to me, it ta actually tastes better than apple cider. 
So we're going to get this on the plates as soon as the cabbage gets done and I warm up the corn souffle is what it really is. All right, y'all, we'll be back and show you what it looks like on the plates in just a few minutes. All right, here's the meal. There's the cabbage steaks and of course there's that pork. It is out of this world good, y'all. The gravy too, or the sauce, is fantastic. There's my plate, and of course we've got our iced tea, but I, I really would encourage y'all to try the pork. And uh, of course this is a sirloin uh, pork roast, and it's got very little fat in it, and it is very tender. So we are ready to eat, y'all. I hope you'll try this, and thanks a lot to um, Chef John of Food Wishes to uh, he did the video showing putting the pork inside the pumpkin. Now he used apple cider and I used apple juice with uh, a little bit of vinegar in it and a little bit of brown sugar. And I must say I think that might have worked better than the apple cider really. Alright, so I'm going to put the recipe down below, right down below this video. And it's going to be a little bit of an altered recipe because I actually added another tablespoon of brown sugar to that sauce. Let me show you what I did. There's what we got left on the cabbage. There's the rest of the pumpkin. And I went ahead and took the rest of that meat and put it down in that sauce. So I'm going to actually freeze that and that'll make another whole meal for us. Now I don't know about freezing the pumpkin that's cooked like that. It might work, it might not. I just don't know. But anyway, back to the plates. So we will see y'all next time. I hope you will really try this because it is fantastic. And that sirloin uh, pork roast was very inexpensive. I mean, if you figure it was, what, $4.70 and we get four meals out of it. All right, y'all, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.